Palisades may be, uh, at least in the Western world, if not in the entire world, the oldest operating uh, commercial reactor. Because recently a British reactor shut down, and the news reports were the oldest commercial reactor is shutting down. Well, Palisades was almost as old as that one. Uh, it got its construction and operating license in 1967, which makes it 45 years old this year. <clears throat> So its 40-year license uh, has long since expired. It was granted a 20-year license extension by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. We resisted it. In fact, the, in, the entire environmental movement of Michigan, for the most part, resisted the license extension at Palisades. But we were steamrolled by the nuclear industry, by the NRC. And Palisades had a very bad year last year. They had five what they call euphemistically unplanned shutdowns two of which were very serious near misses to disaster. In fact, the Union of Concerned Scientists put out a report recently called Living on Borrowed Time, uh, the 15 near misses of 2011 at U.S. nuclear power plants, two of which were at Palisades. Palisades is currently owned and operated by Entergy Nuclear of New Orleans, the second biggest nuclear utility in the country. And I just mention that because five of the 15 near misses were at Entergy reactors, two at Palisades, Two at Pilgrim near Boston, which is a Fukushima Daiichi twin, and then one out in Nebraska at another reactor called Cooper. So the two incidents at Palisades, one involved a repeat of something that happened in 2009 where a service water pump uh, self-destructed. It uh, fractured due to stress corrosion cracking because they used metal that was highly susceptible to failure in the Lake Michigan environment. They made the exact same mistake in 2009. It recurred in 2011. So incredibly, they don't even learn from their mistakes at Palisades. But the most significant uh, incident at Palisades last year happened on September 25th of 2011. An electrician was working on the control panel at full power reactor operations and nearly electrocuted himself when he dropped a positive bus bar on a negative bus bar and short circuited the panel it cut off electricity to half the control room. It threw 22 systems haywire instantly, turned things on that were supposed to be off, turned things off that were supposed to be on. And the NRC documents reveal how close to a disaster it actually came. The NRC said that Palisades came within nine minutes of completely filling one of its steam generators as well as its pressurizer with water called going, going solid. So going solid uh, means that you lose control over the pressure and the temperature in the primary loop. And the steam generators at Palisades have needed replacement for the second time in the plant's history for over five years. So you don't want to stress out the steam generators. And they came within nine minutes of, of doing that. What you can cause in the steam generator is called a cascading failure of steam generator tubes. They're very thin-walled, and that is primary loop cooling water in there under very high pressure. And you can fail these tubes, and then like a domino effect, you can have a cascading failure of tubes. And if you lose enough, it's a loss of coolant accident to the core, which can lead to a meltdown. In addition to all of that, the emergency core cooling system at Palisades was one of those systems that was inadvertently started up by this incident. And Palisades, uh, we have had some very powerful meetings this year with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission about Palisades, and we forced the NRC at one of these meetings to admit publicly that Palisades is the most brittle reactor pressure vessel in the United States. Neutron radiation bombardment of the about eight inch thick metal walls of the reactor pressure vessel, has punched microscopic holes in there due to the impurities in the metal. And if those holes line up just right, you could actually fracture the reactor pressure vessel. And the most likely scenario for this happening would be what's called pressurized thermal shock, where you turn on the emergency core cooling system, the cooling water is injected into the core, and it's kind of like a hot glass under cold water you could fracture that vessel because the ductility's been lost. It's very brittle. So they came very close to actually injecting cooling water during this incident. And it would have been the ultimate test of NRC's 
flippant assurances of safety at Palisades. The Associated Press last summer, June of 2011, uh, did a four-part series called Aging Nukes. And the first installment was about how NRC has weakened safety regulations to allow nuclear power plants to keep operating in the United States despite their age-related degradation. And the first issue they kicked off the series with was pressurized thermal shock and reactor pressure vessel embrittlement. Palisades is the poster child for that issue in the United States. Interestingly, uh, Michael Keegan uh, with Coalition for Nuclear Free Great Lakes wrote a report back in 1993 that documented all of this. So he scooped the Associated Press by 18 years. Palisades had first violated NRC embrittlement standards in 1981, 10 years into operations. That's what he documented in that report. And NRC had, you know, since 1981 up till 1993, had repeatedly weakened its standards again and again. And they've done it in recent years as well. We resisted the license extension at Palisades. Our major contention was embrittlement of the reactor pressure vessel. They promised in 2007 that a plan to address embrittlement would be figured out by 2014. Well, since then, they've relaxed that requirement, and now Palisades is good to go until 2017, they say. Both the steam generators and the embrittled reactor pressure vessel, and even the lid, which is highly degraded at Palisades, on the reactor itself, in the aftermath of the davis Bessey hole-in-the-head fiasco of 2002, where they nearly corroded through the entire lid at davis Bessey near Toledo. The company uh, had money on its mind. The NRC was looking the other way. That was the nearest thing to a disaster since Three Mile Island in the United States was davis Bessey near Toledo, 2002, due to a lid corrosion. Well, Palisades is flirting with that very scenario by keeping an old degraded lid uh, operating at that plant. So Palisades has multiple major repairs and even replacements that are more than five years overdue. The NRC is not forcing Entergy Nuclear to, to make these fixes. Entergy is pocketing the profits. Its CEO, Jane Way J. Wayne Leonard is his name, in a two-year period made $53 million in salary and stock options while these safety repairs are going undone at Palisades.